Welcome everyone to part one of this teaching and study on the Watchman on the Wall. It is my sincere desire that all who take part in this study, that you are blessed. Before we begin, let's open up with prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, I pray that you will guide me throughout this teaching, that you will grant me courage, strength, wisdom, and understanding, and that I not stray from the truth of your word. Father, it is also my prayer that all who take part in this study, that they are blessed and they have ears to hear. But above all, I pray that this brings to you honor and glory. Amen. All right. Now, if you've noticed, I've titled part one, The Watchman on the Wall, The Watchers. Now, I want to assure you as we go along in the study that you will uncover that they are not one and the same. They are as different as night and day, and they each have different duties, different assignments, and different obligations. Let's begin. It hasn't been not too many years, the last few short years, that Father God Yahweh caused a violent shaking among the body of believers, an awakening to the church. We knew there was no question about it that we were living now, but this was it. These are the labor pains. We're in the time of sorrows. These are the biblical labor pains, just as a woman who goes into labor, when she gets that first contraction, there's no doubt in her mind or in anyone around her, look, this is it, but it is coming. And as a woman in labor, with the biblical birth pains, as the contractions get closer and closer together, the pain intensifies and increases until that time when the water breaks and there is deliverance. Now there is significant spiritual applications to the end times, the rapture of the church with the breaking of the water and the deliverance that we will cover in another study at another time. Now, throughout this teaching and study, we're going to take a look at uh, how Yahweh, throughout the Old Testament, appointed watchmen on the wall to warn the people when the enemy was approaching. And as I just stated, there are spiritual aspects to this as well. And we've got to remember that Jesus, that Yeshua, over and over again he told us to be watchful today we seen only a few short years ago we knew that this was a, this was the birth pains with the events that began to unfold we seen matthew 24 it come to life before our very eyes with the mass animal die-offs around the world the mudslides the landslides the tsunamis the earthquakes increasing and intensifying famine hunger and now we are looking at plagues coming upon this earth we know that this is the time of sorrows but when this began on blog uh, blog sites and on uh, social media sites and on the internet format such as YouTube and others People were coming out. They were coming from everywhere proclaiming to be a watchman on the wall, using the term the watchman on the wall and that they were a watcher, that they were appointed by Father God, by Yahweh, to be a watcher. And what I'm about to explain now is that uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, and you will uncover that we probably should not use the term watcher because we see that a lot even today someone will leave a post or a comment on a video that go to so-and-so's page they're a real true watcher i'm going to explain why we should refrain from using the term watcher let's go and let's uncover the truth all right, now, while I explain the significant difference between the watchman on the wall and the watcher, I'm going to do so in terms that will be very, very easy for you, the listener, 
to understand. The watchman on the wall is man in the physical form. Let me take you to the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. The watchman on the wall is not an angelic spiritual being. There is a great, great difference within the two. The watchman on the wall, Genesis 2, verse 7, King James Version Bible. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul, but in this physical form, in this body. A watcher is an angelic spiritual being. Let's go to this study. Now, just so you can understand that the difference, there is a significant difference in the two. Man, as we are in our physical human form, we are spiritual. We have a living soul, but we are on this earthly plane. And we are of the physical, physical world. A watcher is a spiritual angelic entity and being. All right, now many within the body of believers, when they look at this image of the book of Enoch right away, will say, I want no part of this. What he is going to talk about is from the book of Enoch. He's going to talk about the fallen angels that uh, ascended down from Mount Hermon because they found a woman uh, to be fair. And uh, we know that these are the watchers. But nowhere in Scripture, nowhere in the King James Bible do we hear of such watchers. I want to assure everyone that... Uh, I keep the King James Version Bible right here, right next to my heart, but I do, and we should, uh, reference from time to time the book of Enoch and uh, others. Enoch uh, plays a very important part, not only in end-time Bible prophecy, but in the living King James Version Bible, the living uh, word of the Father God, Yahweh. Now, we are correct that the watchers, as they were called, uh, they ascended down from Mount Hermon, and we know what took place. But many believe that don't understand the term watcher, and that throughout the Old Testament, it talks of the watchers. Let me take you to the book of Daniel. Now, as we go to the book of Daniel 4.13, King James Version Bible, we read at verse 13, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. Let me give you a few more examples. Moving along to Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, using the King James Version Bible. Verse 17, we uncover that this matter is by the decree of the watchers. We read this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth, setteth up for it the basis of men let me give you one more example in this teaching now let's go to the time of nebuchadnezzar and the dream let's look at the book of daniel Chapter 4, verse 23 reads, And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, so seven times pass over him. Let me explain to you the difference between a watchman on the wall, a man in the human form, and an angelic uh, being, a watcher. Now, a watchman on the wall, his assignment is to warn the people. But 
the enemy is approaching, that the sword is coming, so that they can prepare and not fall by the sword, that they can prepare and make a change. Now, we also read where these three men show up to Lot's house. Now, these three are watchers. A watcher doesn't sound the alarm and give you a chance, a warning, Lot, you need to change your ways because the enemy is approaching. The watcher delivers Father God's judgment like with Lot. There's no turning back. You have to leave. You leave now. There's no turning back. Judgment is going to fall. Stay tuned as we continue on with the watchman on the wall. We're going to go to part two.